extend my warm welcome to our honorable member of um, uh, Legislative Assembly, Mizoram, uh, Dr. Vallal Thana, and uh, Professor, uh, our speaker, Professor uh, Vallal Thana, Finance Officer, Mizoram University, then our panelists, and then Anwesa Pati, uh, who is um, in, uh, Assistant Manager of uh, India Invest, the Ministry of Commerce, Government of Mizoram, then Director of Vakiria uh, Designing Corporation here in the state of Mizoram, and Dr. Jeanette Banal Limpui, who is a co-secretary of this uh, organizing I mean, webinar. And I am Lalana Izovi, uh, Women's Study Center Honorary Director. I'm right now a professor in the Department of Public Administration. I extend my warmest welcome to each and every one of you. Today's, pro today's program is very important and unique in its own way that our uh, honorable uh, chief guest, Dr. Vanlal Chana, who is right now a sitting uh, MLM in the state of Mizoram, is having a very rich biodata or CV towards the program that we have been, uh, we are conducting right now. So he is a right man and uh, a right person and who has a keen interest toward this entrepreneurship development. So we are very lucky in spite of a very tight schedule, as we know the session of the Mizoram State Legislative Assembly has just started today. So afternoon I mean, time has been spared by uh, Dr. Vallal Tana uh, for this very program and to inaugurate this program with the inauguration speech uh, towards the very topic. So I say thank you to Dr. Vallal Tana also for grazing this occasion. And uh, this shows your keen interest and that you would really like to, I mean, promote, I mean, entrepreneurship development. Uh, so even though it is a Women's Study Center organized, I mean, webinar, then we are not exactly uh, going to focus, I mean, specifically women, but where we are going to have a panel discussion and we may be able to hear more from our panelists like an Anwesa Pati, we call him, uh, we call her, sorry, uh, Soma. So she can share many things and then about her experience and in the area where he is keeping in touch and all. So overall, all, we have our finance officer, Professor Vanal Sona, who is a professor in economics department, uh, Mizoram University, who has been rendering in many ways his expertise, his experience also as an academician, as a, I mean, a promoter, and as a finance officer of the Mizoram Center. So we are also very lucky to have I mean, Professor Vallal Chona. In spite of a very busy schedule, he has had in his own dignified office. So he had agreed to become a speaker in this very uh, function, in this very academic program. So we also say thank you, a big thank you to him also. So uh, with these few words, I express my heartfelt thanks to each and every one of you. My warmest welcome to all the I mean, uh, uh, esteemed member who is uh, who are on the dais, I should say. So uh, Vakiria, they have not yet joined. Uh, Miss Sang Zeli, who is a director, uh, Vakiria Designing uh, I mean, Company, uh, she is suffering from COVID-19 and uh, she is not yet fully recovered. And then she said, if I cannot join, then uh, the representative of this Vakiria uh, would be actually uh, uh, attending the program. So I don't know, I have not yet seen them till now. Uh, there may be a technical problem. So that is how we are going to conduct and both of this, uh, Aneswa Pati, Ms. Aneswa Pati and Ms. Sang Zeli would be a panelist of this very program. So this is how we are going to uh, conduct this webinar in this very afternoon. So I once again 
my heartfelt thanks and warmest welcome to each and every one of you. Equally, I extend my warmest welcome to all the participants uh, to this very program. So may I now uh, invite uh, Dr. Janet Valimpui to share and inform us the credentials of our honorable chief guest. Uh, and then uh, we would invite him also uh, to take his I mean, inaugural speech delivering in this very program. So over to you, Dr. Janet. Mm, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you, Professor Zoe. <clears throat> uh, I'd like uh, to give a few words, say a few words about our, uh, our guest this, uh, this afternoon, Dr. Anil Chanda. Uh, uh, he's, a, he's also an academician and um, teaching in Patsunga University College. And he was elected as a member of the Mizoram Legislative Assembly in 2018. And uh, he's, he, he's had 16 years of teaching experience. And um, He's also very much interested in, uh, in entrepreneurship and as his uh, interest goes, it says that finance, entrepreneurship and development uh, economics. Uh, and uh, he has been very active, not only as, a, as an academician, but also a member of the legislative uh, assembly because he comes from my uh, constituency and I've, I've seen and heard a lot of good things about him. And uh, there are no amount of words to express uh, his, uh, his enthusiasm uh, as a, a public figure, both uh, in the public, uh, both in uh, uh, as serving as a, you know, uh, as, as a servant of, of the people. And he's had uh, many publications and uh, some of them, most of them has been connected with uh, entrepreneurship. And uh, we are glad that he's here uh, to, give us a few thoughts on entrepreneurship and, and also uh, women um, entrepreneurship. So without further much ado, let me uh, request uh, Dr. Valen uh, to say a few words. Sir, the, uh, the platform is yours. Thank you, Dr. Janet. <clears throat> uh, Professor Valen Sona, the finance officer of MZU, uh, Professor uh, Lal Nezoui, Honorary Director of Women's Studies Center, the Resource Persons, uh, participants. Uh, it is a privilege uh, for me to be a chief guest in this occasion, as I have been connected with, uh, I have been connected with entrepreneurship in various ways and capabilities. As a teacher in the Commerce Department, I have been keenly interested uh, in entrepreneurship, especially as a process for economic upliftment of the youngsters in Mizoram. I used to work as a consultant for, for some uh, budding entrepreneurs. I used to go there sometimes, uh, even outside Mizoram. And in 2018, I was luckily elected by the people of Aizon North 2 constituency as an MLA. So upon being interested with uh, a few local area funds and better exposure to the livelihood of the people. I am now more concentrated towards the upliftment of women through the use of SHEs, uh, self-help groups, and cooperative societies. With the help of women in my constituency, I was able to produce masks, surgical masks, at the outset of the COVID-19 pandemic. At that time, surgical masks were scars, and even the medical operation team uh, set up by the state government have to uh, come and take my mask, the mask that we produced, and distribute it to the border areas of Mizoram. That we, I did it with the help of uh, women uh, from the uh, like SHGs. And many women were able to earn some money uh, from the comfort of them, their home during that uh, lockdowns. We have many lockdowns here in Mizoram. So uh, even during those lockdowns, they can endure the hardship. And uh, we also had some uh, programs in which, uh, like I met with the self-help groups, I met with the federations, the, the collection of SHEs that is called federation. So uh, we had some projects also that I'll mm, be talking up. 
so some even like some of the women also distributed masks that they produce freely in their community also and right now i'm working with uh, more than 100 women in my constituency in producing stoles cushion covers tea coasters table runners bed runners and so on uh, using the cotton thread that is being produced in mizoram that is i'm working with them on uh, handloom projects and uh, you see the majority of the handloom pro uh, products that you can see there in tenzol golf course it is it was produced by our weavers and just yesterday also a local entrepreneur which was which i had an agreement with signed an mou with the the sericulture department wherein weavers from our constituency will be able to procure the costly uh, silk threads on credit so they can take it freely but when they finish when they are finished with uh, the product uh, the department will buy back the the let's say the silk maybe uh, stoles sometimes we make stoles and table runners so these products they will buy it back wherein they will cut the the cost of the silk threads so uh, just yesterday uh, we are expanding <laughs> our uh, project also through the use of the this uh, sericulture department and tomorrow i will sign an mou with a memorandum of uh, uh, understanding with uh, a development agency who will set up a common facility center on food packaging this food packaging center will be used only by SAGs. And nearly, I can say, all the SAGs in my constituency are uh, like the members are from uh, uh, families who need uh, economic upliftment. And all of them are women also. So I have been working with women <laughs> uh, since I, I started uh, being an MLA on the uh, economic upliftment. And through the use of this CFCs, we will be able to produce high quality food products, maybe uh, like uh, uh, packaged foods, uh, like pickles and all. So they will be more hygienic with better packages and labels also. And uh, like I said, all the ventures that I have made it is connected with market. I never make any uh, agreement unless I have a market connection. So what the first and foremost thing I look uh, towards an agreement is whether it is being connected with the market or not. So I try to connect the entrepreneurs with the market. Then I introduce both of the uh, sites, means the entrepreneurs and the markets. Then uh, I like this handloom project is started with only rupees 50,000. But then we managed to give a livelihood to 40 households. Like that, I'm. Uh, if you connect it with the market, I have found that the entrepreneurs. So I'm working with women entrepreneurs here only, so uh, they are very enthused. They are very inspired to produce more, and they evolve their business also. So uh, I have been working with women, like I said, uh, and it's uh, expanding also. See, it is very ironic that. With all the bamboos that surround us, we have a huge uh, bamboo resource here in Mizoram, but we still have to buy toothpicks from outside the state. And we have the highest production per hectare among the eastern Indian states in turmeric. But mostly, uh, like many of the turmeric powder that we buy, it's from outside the state. And we have one of the best varieties of ginger in uh, India, and maybe the world also, <laughs> I don't know, but uh, from foreign also, foreign countries also, try, they try to procure from Mizoram. But still we have to buy ginger paste from outside the States. There are many, uh, let's say, gaps that we have to fill up through the use of entrepreneurships. And I have found that with the use of women entrepreneurship, uh, we can fill this gap. I'm not only concentrating on women, even men also, youngsters also are doing that. Uh, yesterday also, I just had a, a meeting with some youngsters, uh, IAM graduates, 
So we are trying to do some, um, let's say, entrepreneurship programs for the youngsters in my constituency. The youngsters, uh, they want to break out. They want to do something. They want to find their own way. But they feel that there is a gap. There is the gap that from the side of the uh, like the, the bureaucrats or the let's say uh, politicians like us that has to be filled up and this gap uh, we are filling up and Mizoram we have this entrepreneurship development cell EDC that they are doing uh, quite well also I was a part of that also I was a master trainer in that so uh, we can do great things and I feel that uh, Programs like this, program like program, programs like this, will enrich, will motivate uh, the entrepreneurs, and by motivating them, they will contribute more to the society. They will get more uh, money. It not only will they get more money, they will contribute back to the society. It's a like a cycle. So I wish all the participants uh, to have a productive and enriching moment from the speakers and I give my heartfelt wish to the Women's Studies Study Center MZU in taking strides towards the upliftment and better understanding of women in Mizoram. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Vanal Sana, for your very uh, enlightened and very befitting uh, inaugural speech. So we know that you have uh, such an enthusiasm to promote entrepreneurship, not only to women, I mean, overall, of course, but since uh, you have um, been focusing for promoting women entrepreneurs, and I'm too, I mean, uh, I mean, I mean too grateful to you also. So I was thinking while you were talking, that you have been confining within your uh, constituency <laughs> that I don't know, I understood you or not, that you should not be very biased and it should be for all of us. That's what I was, I mean, thinking, but it would not be like that also. Maybe I misunderstood you. Uh, what I mean to say is that if, I mean, more things can really gain, I mean, from you, from your expertise, your experience and your achievement, and then uh, by promoting this entrepreneurship development. So thank you so much for your I mean, kindness, for accepting our humble invitation and even delivering such a very wonderful uh, inaugural speech. Thank you. Thank you so much. So may I now uh, invite Dr. Janet Vandal Limpuyu once again, if she doesn't find any problem, to share the credentials of our uh, Professor Vandal uh, Tona, uh, who is a finance officer at Mizoram University. May I invite Janet, Dr. Uh, Dr. Janet Vandal Limpuyu to introduce the, uh, Professor Vandal Tona. Over to you. Uh -huh. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, there's a little bit problem uh, with regard to the other panelists. She's not able to join, so I was just coordinating with her. Um, so, Professor Vanal Tona, another academician, started his um, uh, academic profession as a teacher in uh, lecturer and a teacher in uh, from 1987, and presently he is a professor in the Department of Economics. And uh, his uh, uh, teaching, his experience, or uh, his interest is on economics of human resource, uh, international trade, finance, budgetary uh, theory and practices. And um, he joined the university, that is Mizoram University, in 2005. And prior to that, he was working under the government of Mizoram. And uh, he's... Uh, guided uh, PhD and MPhil scholars, and he has many, many, many publications to his credit, which is, uh, you know, uh, uh, difficult to say because there are pages and pages of it. And um, we are happy that he is with us uh, this afternoon to share his thoughts on entre entrepreneurship and uh, uh, basically about um, the state of Mizoram also. I think he will go into that. And uh, 
He is right now the finance officer of Missouri University. We thank you very much, sir, for uh, your time, sharing your time with us. And we hope we will uh, take lots back from your uh, talk this afternoon. Thank you, sir. Becky. Uh, speaker, sir, you are audible. We can hear oh. you. Oh, yeah. yes. Everything is all right okay. from our side, yeah. OK, OK, thank you. Thank you, madam. Uh, should I start now? You, you yes, hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, yes, you yes are please. OK. Sir, please. Uh, very good afternoon to all of you. Uh, respected Chief Guest, Dr. Vanal Khanna, Member, Mizoram Legislative Assembly, Panelist, Anwesha Pathi, Assistant Manager, Invest India, Ministry of Commerce and Industry, Government of India, Lalsang Zeli, Director, Vakiria Private Limited, <coughs> and the two organizing secretaries, Prof. Professor Lal Neizobi, Department of Public Administration and Honorary Director, UGC Women's Study Center here in uh, Mizoram <coughs> University, and Dr. Janet Vandal Lempuyi, Associate Professor, Department of Public Administration, Aizol West College. Today, I am very delighted to give a brief uh, overview of entrepreneurship and economic development. Uh, theoretically, the subject is very vast, and there are a huge literature piling up in academic institutions. Although, in spite of its theoretical relevance, with the new change, global environment, change in global economic environment, uh, skill development and entrepreneurship development are uh, going hand in hand. So the topic is very, very relevant. So I'll be talking first about the conceptual framework and the historical evolution of the role of uh, entrepreneur development in the development process. And I will also briefly highlight about the women entrepreneurship in India. And I will conclude my speech outlining major policy initiative, which has been undertaken by central government and Mizoram state government. Economic development indicates an increase in a country's overall output over a period of time, which is accompanied by structural transformation of the economy from primary sector to secondary and then starts, uh, service sector. Economic development is usually measured by an increase in the gross domestic product or growth in per capita income. However, since 1970s, economic development came to be redefined in terms of the reduction or elimination of poverty and unemployment within the context of a growing economy. Today, improvement in health conditions and sanitation of the nation have also become an integral part of economic development. Any activities that convert ideas into economic opportunities lie at the very heart of entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurial function include coordination, innovation, uncertainty bearing, capital supply, decision making, ownership and resource allocation. Entrepreneurship is a source of innovation and change, and as such, spurs improvement in productivity and uh, economic competitive, competitiveness. Some writers distinguish between two types of entrepreneurs. One is innovative entrepreneurs who bring new products and processes to the market and introduce new services. 
marketing technique or business structures. And the other one is replicative entrepreneurs who enter existing market with unique selling propositions. Another differentiation is sometimes made between opportunity and necessity entrepreneurs. The first engaging in entrepreneurial activities to become more independent or increase uh, their income. And the second one that is necessity entrepreneurs is uh, just because uh, they are doing so to maintain their income and when there are no other options for work. Entrepreneurs play a vital, a vital role in economic and social development of the country. As we have already mentioned, entrepreneurs boost economic growth and development by introducing innovative technologies, product services, process innovation, and open up new markets. Good example of entrepreneurs are, you know, uh, Bill Gates, these peoples are who innovate production process by uh, invention, discoveries of new technologies. Another important role played by entrepreneurs could be uh, when markets are entered by a new products or new entrepreneurs new businesses are coming up, then entrepreneurs intensify competition for existing businesses. Consumers benefit from the resulting lower prices and greater product variety. Entrepreneurs stimulate employment generation by uh, creating new jobs when they enter the market. Entrepreneurial activity raises the productivities of farms and economies, competition between new and existing farms leads to survival of the fittest. Entrepreneurs accelerate structural change by replacing established farms. Existing farms often struggle to adjust to new market conditions and permanent changes, getting locked into their old position. They, they fail to make the necessary internal adjustment and lack the ability for creative destruction, which was famously described by Sue Peter in 1934. The entry of new businesses and the exit of all farms can help to free, to free farms from a lock-in position. Moreover, entrepreneurs may create entirely new markets and new industries that become the engines of future economic growth processes. However, it may be noted that high regulatory burdens and unsecured intellectual property rights are detrimental to innovative entrepreneurship. Regulatory obstacles to setting up a business, such as the need to buy permits or licenses and other entry barriers may discourage entrepreneurship. Over-regulation of commercial activities prevents entrepreneurship from flourishing because it increases the cost of starting a business and decreases flexibility and the ability to react quickly to opportunities as they arise, thus reducing experimentation. Similarly, frequently changing complex, unclear or opaque regulation make it difficult to understand the legal, the legal, the legal environment for entrepreneurial activities. Now coming to women entrepreneurship in India. Government of India defined a woman entrepreneur as an enterprise owned and controlled by a woman having a, a minimum financial interest of 51% of the capital invested and giving at least 51% of the employment generated in the enterprise to women. That means at least 51% must be a women employees. Women's equal access and control over economic and financial resources is critical for the women, for the achievement of gender equality and empowerment of women, as well as equitable and sustainable economic growth and development. 
In India, female headed households were about 11% in rural areas and 12% in urban areas. Female literacy rate has come to 65.46 as per census 2011. Work participation rate for female was 25.51, 51 as per 2011 uh, census. We all know that women have started playing an important role in decision making at all levels. The sixth economic census 2013 highlighted several features on the status of women entrepreneurship in India. The total number of establishments owned by women entrepreneurs was a little more than 8 million. 8 million enterprises are owned by women. That is almost 14% of the total establishment. This establishment, this establishment provided by women provided employment to 13.45 million person. That means 12, I mean 10 to 24%, almost a little more than 10% employment in the establishment, business establishment is engaged by women enterprises. Agricultural activities have been the dominant enterprise run by women entrepreneurs, which is followed by manufacturing and retail trade. OBC women own 41% of women enterprise, scheduled cars own about 12%, scheduled tribe own only 7%. Well, the general, that means others group, uh, own and operated more than 40%. Religious ways, Hindu women run 65% of the women enterprise, Muslim about 13% and Christian only 5.2%. Among the states, Tamil Nadu accounted, the, accounted for the largest share of women enterprise, which is followed by Kerala, Andhra Pradesh, West Bengal and Maharashtra. Now coming to women, uh, I mean, entrepreneurship development program at the national level. We all know that a separate Ministry of Skill Development and Entrepreneurship has been established under the Government of India to coordinate all skill development and entrepreneurship effort in the country. The ministry has formulated national skill development mission and National Policy on Skill Development and Entrepreneurship in 2015. The Policy for Entrepreneurship proposed nine-part entrepreneurship strategy comprising the following features. That means, number one, educate and equip potential and early stage entrepreneurs across India. Connect entrepreneurs to peers, mentors, and incubators. Support entrepreneurs to entrepreneurs hubs, e-hubs. Catalyze a culture shift to encourage entrepreneurship. Encourage entrepreneurship among underrepresented groups. Promote entrepreneurship amongst women. Improve ease of doing business. Improve access to finance. Foster social entrepreneurship and grassroots innovation. The state government of Mizoram also formulated Mizoram Entrepreneurship and Startup Policy during 2019 under the aegis of Planning and Program Implementation Department. The policy envisages ecosystem building for entrepreneurship development under which the following schemes were undertaken. Entrepreneurship Awareness Program, Entrepreneurial events and Mizoram Outstanding Entrepreneurs Awards are organized. Number two, entrepreneurship manual has been published. Master trainers programs organize and conduct exposure and study tour and provide funding on entrepreneur research program. Number three, institutional building such as establishment of entrepreneurship development center Entrepreneurship Knowledge Cell, Startup Hub and Incubation Center, 
microfinance has been provided through micro startup capital competition, which is popularly known as Mizoram Rabi and Mizoram Plan Contest, which is another name given in Mizo, that is Mizoram Kailo. These are the two microfinance scheme provided by the state government. Number five is acceleration program comprising seed investment, connection, mentorship, assistance to business startups. Number six, reform in regulatory environment to produce business friendly regulatory framework such as single window clearance, ease of doing business, easier filing of patents, provision of subsidies, reimbursement facilities, relaxation of public procurement norms for startup. One thing I would like to share uh, with you is when new economic development policy was formulated way back in 2014, I was fortunate to be one of the convener of that policy formulating uh, committee. And in that, we included uh, entrepreneurship skill development and entrepreneurship development as one of the key engines for economic development in Missouri. And today I am happy to share with you some of many, uh, many of the proposals made under that NEDP has been continued till today and it has become an important element of uh, ecosystem for further entrepreneur development in the state. As we all know, entrepreneurs play a key role in the development process. Actually, until and unless we have uh, entrepreneur classes that are willing to take risks, that are willing to bear uncertainty in the face of hardship and several constraints we are facing, our Mizoram economy could never be uh, improved. No real development would take place until and unless we have private investment coming up. And those private investment would be coming up only when they are skilled workers, entrepreneurs' qualities are improved. These are the key qualities we are still looking at the moment. It is my wishes that one day, Mizo entrepreneurs, not only in our own state, they will come forward at the national level, international level. This is the real challenges we are facing. Fortunately, Mizo women are very enterprising. Their skills in business dealings are very, very high. So if we give them proper training, encouragement, support with financial and other incentives, they could become important components in the development process of our beautiful state. Thank you, all of you, once again. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you. Very insightful and very uh, equitable by the, I mean, uh, speech, the speaker of I mean this program. So I know I would like to take. I mean, thank you, sir. Of course, I would like to take the opportunity. Uh, um, I mean, this time uh, of uh, thanking him uh, once again, our finance officer. So the Women's Study Center um, University has been actually started functioning this of 
in humble invitation to become a chief guest and then guest of honor as I'm really sorry. I'm really sorry. So power supply mean keep I mean failing. This is a problem. So uh, Professor Vanal Sona is always I mean such a big bone and really and, uh, and the cause of his I mean academic blessings and encouragement that the women function till now in a proper way uh, with great difficulty because. Uh, uh, if they don't provide with the uh, um, our finance officer, then we have been doing such academic by this women's study center. Oh. Thank you yeah. for oh. your. I'm hot a lot. I think I'm so many. Sorry. So I said a big thank you to Professor Vanal by Rata also that has been actually shared by Janet Vanal Pui. So maybe one third or one fourth has been shared only. So he has published many books on economic related issues also. And uh, we invited him for women course, women's I mean, uh, academic program also. And he is always the person who encourage and then leading us, blessing us. So with these few things, I say a big thank you to Professor Vanal Sona. So let me just take on the opportunity once again to extend warm welcome, warmest welcome to Vakiria Private Limited Company. Sang zeli hi adam samwa COVID-19 ka anave maya kan imbiak lai po ka nin a ithe isam chuan rom kalte kai kan chief guest po yanin a a nominate vyao chu nia kan hanin tia ei bo ina har satak chung pu in min ron lan tiam thei a ma sang ze li tak hi a ron kal lang thei lo ni in ka ringa a poi kan ti khop mai eng po ni se representative fee head designer ni tu ra ka ngaya a ma in na kina a lai ron introduce sanga eng po ni se to invite uh, our uh, panelists and then uh, I'm going to hand over to Dr. Janet Vandal Limpui since power failure keeps coming also and in the university we don't have power, I mean connectivity and then supply also that's why I came running from university then we could do by somehow that but at home also keeps actually failing so that's why I'm going to hand over to Dr. Janet Vandal Limpui and she would be uh, actually administering even a Q and A. Then the participants may actually post uh, in uh, in a set of a Q and A. You may utilize the chat box so that we can also attend. So putona tilka a copy ka kanite itswan alom om kopang kaini. I mean, uh, excuse me when I spell out in Mizo. Then I hope you would understand me also. Then uh, we may also have a discussion uh, mixed with Mizo and English also. I think that would be permissible so that it would be more fruitful uh, for many of the participants also. So to kan say dua, kan lom tak tak niti ka, kan say dua, juan over to you, uh, co-secretary, Dr. Janet Vanal Limpui. Now I'm going to hand it over to you as a co-host. Thank you, Janet, over to you. Thank you, Professor Zoe. There are uh, always technical problems. We might have some problems with the connectivity. So let's try to adjust that. Um, uh, now we will call our panelist, Ms. Anvisha Patu. Before that, I will just, uh, let me say a few things about her. Anvisha is a gold medal awardee by the Honorable Prime Minister of India, Narendra Modi, for the best academic record 
in the Master of Arts in Development Studies program at IIT Madras. And she is currently working at Invest India Department for Promotion of Industry and International Trade, Ministry of Commerce and Industry, Government of India. She is part of the core team for strategizing and implementing one district, one product initiative of the Government of India. Uh, prior to Invest India, Anvisha has worked at Pricewater House Cooper Private Limited as an associate consultant in the government reforms and infrastructure development, a business with uh, demonstrated expertise in skill enhancement and livelihoods, generation social science, a social sector advisory, a former um, Mitex Global Link Research Fellow, and Visha has participated in the University de Montreal, uh, Cal uh, Canada, and the India Indo German Center for Sustainability. India, where she has worked solving global health and peri urban sustainability challenges. And Visha is a social entrepreneur enthusiast and happens uh, to be the coordinator of the Enactus chapter at IIT Madras to promote social entrepreneurship among students. Uh, we are indeed very grateful that you are here, Anvisha, uh, uh, to give us your thoughts on entrepreneurship, women in India. Over to you, Anvisha. Thank you so much, Dr. Janet. Uh, I hope I'm audible. Yeah, so um, good afternoon, everyone. Um, Honorable MLA, Dr. Vanlan Thlana, Professor Vanlal Chana, Finance Officer, uh, Mizoram University, Organizing Secretaries, uh, Professor Zobi and uh, Dr. Janet, and uh, the representative uh, on behalf of Vakiria uh, and uh, Ms. Uh, Lal Sangzeli, who is here with us, and all the participants, a very warm welcome to you. And thank you so much for giving me this opportunity to talk to you. Um, let me just quickly share my screen and uh, then I'll tell you what I want to talk to you about in the next nine to 10 minutes. Um, please let me know once the screen is visible. Yeah, perfect. Thank you so much. So um, I am here today to talk to you about uh, women and entrepreneurship development with a few stories, uh, as I like to call them, um, of inspiration from Northeast India. And in the next 10 minutes, I will try to tell you about uh, three inspiring stories from three different states uh, in Northeast India. And uh, before I begin, I would like to thank um, the chief guest and the chief speaker for the event who have already laid a very good background for me to directly jump into the examples and the stories and the case studies, because now we know what does an entrepreneur mean? What is the theoretical framework in which um, they operate? What are the practical challenges they face? And also the different policies and programs being undertaken by the central government, as well as the government of Mizoram, um, as the respective speakers have already highlighted. So to begin, women in entrepreneurship uh, in India is a journey that dates back to many, many centuries, uh, if I can uh, think about it that way beginning with uh, Rani Lakshmi Bai, who was an entrepreneur in her own right in terms of the freedom struggle, or uh, the queen, uh, Ahilya Bai Holkar from Central India in the Malwa region, who inspired women to produce textiles and uh, promote trade, or even um, Kasur Bai Gandhi, who was uh, Mrs. Uh, Mahatma Gandhi and promoted uh, different kinds of handicraft and activities among women for making themselves sufficient. To the three uh, wonderful ladies on your screen right now, um, Kiran Majumdar Shaw, who is uh, a tycoon in the pharmaceutical sector in India, uh, Falguni Nayar, who is uh, a recent uh, very, very famous entrepreneur in the cosmetic and um, beauty and wellness segment in India, and of course, um, Indra Nui, who is the CEO of uh, PepsiCo, and given these examples, uh, when I was approached by Professor Zobi to come and talk to you about uh, entrepreneurship and women uh, in entrepreneurship and the kind of development that they promise, um, I was very, very inspired and wanted to talk to you about uh, three specific case studies from the Northeast India, who I believe give very heavy competition to the three women on your screen right now. 
And uh, in the next um, seven to eight minutes, let me run you through uh, three such um, ladies who have shaken the world in terms of the impact that they have brought about uh, in different sectors that they belong to. So I would like to begin with a story from the West Jaintia Hills District in Meghalaya, where um, entrepreneur Mary Wankar um, has started Lay Organica to promote uh, Lakadong turmeric, which is one of the world's finest turmeric. And uh, interestingly, Honorable MLA also talked about uh, um, turmeric and its importance um, in our food palate, in pharmaceuticals, nutraceuticals earlier um, in his address to the gathering. And uh, Lakadong turmeric is one of the world's finest turmeric with about 7% uh, curcumin content which is uh, more than the average 2 to 3% that we find in turmeric that is grown in the rest of the world. And uh, Mary, um, who can be seen uh, to the right of your screen, has been very, very inspirational in taking this turmeric from West Jayantia Hills District uh, out to the world, famous as turmeric latte, as different other food products, um, and alongside um, a turmeric honey-based soap uh, to diversify the product. And um, her idea was to understand that the women producing Lakatong turmeric put in months and months of effort, but do not realize the value of uh, the world's finest turmeric. And she set out to change this landscape of agricultural and processed food business in Meghalaya. And also, in fact, for the entire Northeast region, now that they operate um, across the country and even export internationally as Lay Organica. And this is the first example I wanted to talk to you about. The second case study or story, as I call it, the inspiring story that I want to talk to you about is uh, of the entrepreneur uh, Lorembam Yaifabi, who is from the northeastern state of Manipur uh, and uh, is very, very instrumental in the lifestyle services provided in the state and is rapidly looking at expanding to the rest of the northeastern states as well. And uh, she is the founder of Mirror, the beauty store, and is inspiring because during the pandemic is when she understood the grassroots problems of how uh, women are not able to step out of their homes. And a lot of people in the lifestyle um, sector, in the beauty and wellness sector, are affected uh, for the lack of uh, opportunities to go out and for the social distancing and quarantining norms due to the uh, COVID-19 pandemic. And uh, she gave a direct competition to uh, the urban company, which many of you might have heard as a startup uh, in the Northeast region by uh, introducing at-home uh, grooming services uh, by women, for women uh, in uh, Manipur, uh, based out of Imphal and rapidly spreading to the rest of the Northeast. What is inspiring about these stories is that they have taken that entrepreneurial spirit um, that Professor Chona talked about in his speech to the next level by um, implementing these principles that are understood mostly in theory into practice. And that brings me to the last and uh, most interesting case study here. Uh, I'm fortunate enough to have uh, uh, a representative from Vakiria um, on behalf of uh, Ms. Lal Sangzeli. Uh, and this is a case study I've chosen from the state of Mizoram in the April fashion uh, industry. And this particular uh, case study was most uh, inspiring for me, if you ask me, because uh, when we talk about the Mizopuan, uh, very often we have heard about its traditional uh, acceptance as uh, a traditional uh, apparel that is used for um, participation in traditional functions, for uh, you know, representing the Mizo uh, core identity. Uh, however, um, the sisters on your screen, uh, Lalden Sangi, uh, Lal Sangzeli, and Lalden Pui, all three of them specifically set out on a journey to take the Puan um, out to the world and inspire fashion going beyond its traditional implications and, and uh, take it to the next level by reinstilling a new Sunday fashion statement uh, for the state of Mizoram, for which uh, I believe they have been awarded by the Honorable Minister um, Shrimati, um, Smriti Rani as well. 
um, and the Devi Awards 2019, um, if I remember correctly, and how they have changed the typical traditional connotation and made it a viable business of over two crores today, um, changing the fashion statement of the entire state and also making the Poan famous in the country as well as globally. Having said that, I have um, about two minutes more to quickly tell you what I found most interesting in the three stories and uh, the key message that I want all of you to take back home today with you when we talk about uh, entrepreneurship. And that is um, all three examples that you just saw were from different sectors. One was from the agriculture sector, one was from the lifestyle services sector, and the other one was from the apparel fashion technology sector. All three were from different states with different cultural ethos and identities, um, the state of Manipur, Meghalaya, and Mizoram. All three of them were from entrepreneurs from very diverse and different backgrounds. But all three of them are profitable and successful ventures that have been started by women um, of the Northeast, um, by the Northeast, and for the Northeast people, but are taking these products globally as well, right? And despite these different themes cutting across the case studies and the stories uh, that I presented, the key ingredient of the success um, in their entrepreneurial journey was a focus on sustainability, right? A focus on the demand for sustainability through a very core attention that is being paid to organic methods, to a sustainable approach to business, where the people they are working with are women largely, the people they are um, targeting and the way they are focusing and channelizing their marketing is very organic, as well as the kinds of methods they use for the branding and outreach of the initiatives, right? All of them um, highlight the demand for sustainability and focus on how being organic, being true to the local ethos, uh, that is being sensitive to the local ethos while promoting a global brand. And at the same time, all three of them have also focused on um, the sustainability of demand, right? They are not just social entrepreneurs, talking about social entrepreneurship from a not-for-profit perspective, but are very much profiteering in profit-making um, in the sense that they are valuing the sustainability of demand focusing on the kind of uh, information and product they channel across the different segments that they're targeting so that they remain profitable while also helping different women uh, in the communities that they're working with. And uh, that, my dear friends and audience, is the message uh, I would want you to carry forward today at the end of this uh, webinar, that entrepreneurship and women in entrepreneurship specifically um, in the context of development economic, social, psychological, cultural, and political in many ways, uh, heavily depends on this idea of economic viability and sustainability, as well as environmental sustainability. And all three of the case studies that I talked to you about are fantastic examples of how women in the Northeast um, have done it already and are uh, inspiring stories for us to take back home and um, give back to the society while also being and remaining profitable economically. Thank you so much for uh, this opportunity once again. And uh, back to you, uh, Dr. Janet and Professor Zovi. Um, thank you, Anvisha. That was really, really good presentation. And I applaud you for that. And I'm sure there must be a, a lot of questions with the case studies that you have done. and. Uh, I think a lot of our participants also might be having uh, those uh, some questions, some queries from your case studies, and I hope you will be able to uh, tackle those queries. All right. Uh, so uh, we'll go to our next presenter. Uh, since Ma'am has said that uh, the director of uh, media is unable to attend today because uh, she is suffering from COVID nineteen. So she has sent a, a representative, uh, Ms. Uh, Louis. she is the head designer at Vakire Private Limited, and she also happens to be the daughter of the younger sister, Naldin Sagi, and uh, she graduated from um, 
uh, NIFT, National Institute of Fashion Technology, Kolkata. Uh, she uh, completed her bachelor's in fashion designing. And uh, presently, she's the head designer at Bakiria uh, Private Limited and also uh, works as an instructor. And um, a very uh, important thing that I want to spell out today is that she is the winner of the ITC Merit Scholarship 2014. And we are indeed very grateful that she is here with us uh, to share her thoughts on uh, women entrepreneurship and her and their journey of Akiria uh, Private Limited. Uh, over to you, uh, Ruat Lui. Hello, uh, am I audible? Yes. Okay. Uh, thank you so much, everyone. Uh, our chief guest, uh, Dr. Vanda Thana, and a speaker, Professor Vanda Thana, and then our organizing secretaries. So thank you so much. And my fellow panelists, Anvesha Pati, uh, hello to you. And I would like to thank everyone who attended this uh, seminar. And I'm not sure that we are like the right person or the right company to state like to talk about women entrepreneurship because uh, we this company started back in 2005. Uh, first, it was called uh, computerized embroidery uh, because uh, the, all the things we done were based on like embroidered machinery and stuff. So, but then uh, when we wanted to expand the business, uh, it was called we transferred it into Vakiria, uh, which. Uh, uh, for the people who do not know, it's a headgear, uh, traditional headgear of Mizora. So we wanted, we transferred our name, we changed our name to Vakiria, so that like if other people from other states uh, wanted to do business with us, then they can understand that we were based from Mizora. So the ethnicity was very important for us. And we started, I wanted to tell this story because like when this company started, I was just a very little girl in a school in school uniform. But uh, I saw how like my parents and my aunties, how they struggled to uh, to run this business because running uh, women, uh, like being a woman entrepreneur, like in back in the 2000s was very hard because a lot of women were like they were, it was typical for them to stay at home and people questioned them because they left home, they started their business and everyone was, uh, everyone and like even our, some of our customers were like questioning how they run their family because everyone, every uh, every day they came to the store and then they treat their customers, they deal with their customers. So uh, it was not an easy place like back in the 2000s. But then uh, being started without having like not a whole uh, amount of money or not an um, amount of a huge amount of backup, but like they carried on, which uh, because I'm I was able to stand instead of them today. I'm very proud to say that, like I am a very proud daughter and a very proud niece of the of the things that my mom and my aunties have created. Uh, after doing some business and stitching garments and clothes, uh, they started uh, a fashion institute. Uh, which was first called CEIFT uh, back in 2009, and which was later turned into VIFT, Fakiria Institute of Fashion Technology, uh, which till date more, uh, more than have like um, around more than 300 plus students. Like, so I am very happy to say that around from the past 300 students, more around 70% or more of the past our students start their own business and become an entrepreneur. So we are very happy about that. And many of them have become a very uh, well-known designers, even here in Mizoram. So currently, Vakiria is having around 120 to 130 employees. Uh, but th since COVID, things have changed a little bit. So I think we are around 100 or something employees right now. So in 2017, uh, apparel and garment manufacturing center was uh, run under the Ministry of Textile and uh, Central Government. So from 2017, uh, we started running the garment center in Luangwal, in Industrial God Center. So uh, over there, we have around uh, uh, around 70 employees. So most of them around from 70 
I, I think around 60 or 50 to 60 of them are women. Here in uh, the same happens to be here in our Zargot office and Zargot factory also. Uh, majority of the women, if I said like all of them are women, I might be wrong because there are a few men who are running the deliveries and stuff. So majority of all of our employees are women. So like from the uh, earlier presentation, we have heard like if if there has to be an entrepreneurship run by a woman, then it has to be like 51% of the employees have to be women. So around, in our company, around 90, 95% of them are women. So we, we try to hire as many women as we can to support each families and to support women, to uplift women. Uh, as our fellow panelists have uh, mentioned, uh, we received uh, the Debbie Awards from Yes, uh, Srimiti Zubin Irani, the then uh, Minister of Textile. So that also was an award that celebrates uh, women who have a unique achievements or who, women who displays um, uh, innovations and dynamism. So we are very happy uh, that I could be the one to share the stories of Vakira. And I really hope that the uh, participants who are listening today uh, also finds uh, the motivation to uh, like run their own business, to be a women entrepreneur, to be an entrepreneur, if, if uh, whether male or female, to be an entrepreneur, to run their own company, to start their own business uh, since uh, entrepreneurship uh, improved uh, economic, growth, it, uh, economic growth and uh, it stabilized uh, everything I'm, I'm i want to say everything and uh, within a country so uh, if we, uh, women start uh, an entrepreneurship then it inspires other women so i wanted to invite everyone who listens here today to at least do a one uh, uh, take it a one step towards entrepreneurship so that we can inspire other women our fellow women uh, to step out of the comfort zone and to uh, to follow our footsteps thank you so much uh, back to you Dr. Janet. Thank you, Ruat Louis. Very inspiring. Uh, from a small, um, you know, uh, uh, workshop, you've expanded, uh, and uh, in, you have more than ninety percent, ninety-five percent of your employees are women, and you have more than one twenty uh, employees. And I think that's that says a lot about the entrepreneurial skill of. Uh, the women in Vakiria Private Limited. Uh, thank you very much for the presentation. I think Professor Zoe would like to make a small uh, a remark here. Ma'am. Thank you, Dr. Janet, uh, uh, for giving me, I mean, chance uh, to spell out, I mean, a word or two. Uh, thank you so much. This is not the first, I uh, mean, venture that we do with the Vakiria. It was in 2019 when the National Seminar on uh, Entrepreneurship Development in a Hotel Regency, in which uh, the chairperson, Rekha Sharma, along with other seven members, uh, with the officials could come and even stay uh, here in Mizoram. So uh, the Vakiria, I mean, uh, private limited is one of the actually uh, uh, entrepreneurs who had been invited. So they had shared their actually experience and expertise, even encourage the young participants in that very seminar. So I, did, I take this uh, new opportunity to say thank you once again to this Vakiria Private Limited. I know they are my friends. Thank you so much. With great difficulty in spite of I mean, sickness, indeed, that you could make it this time once again. Thank you so much. So I... Uh, 
may not say many things. And then if uh, Dr. Anel Sana, our Honorable Chief Guest, I mean, can actually share some few things once again, because or even from him that women are also engaged the men's I mean, business food industry has been started by even a young female from Mizoram, even under I mean, this leaves, I mean, promotions. So if he can share some more few things, I mean, with us, so that the participants of this very uh, webinar can also uh, I mean, uh, permits him anyway, not right now. So Q and A or chat box may also be attempted like that. Yes, thank you, Janet. Thank you. Oh, don't make, oh. <laughs> yeah. thank you, uh, Professor. So uh, I've been connected with uh, entrepreneurs since mm -hmm. I, I teach commerce in a college. So uh, we have this entrepreneurship. Uh, subject in which our students go out and study uh, different sectors uh, in the uh, like uh, in the state and what I found is that like when I went to IAM Calcutta for a training the thing one thing that I got back is that P-A-I-N pain like like we used to say that uh, necessity is the mother of all inventions so we have different pains here in Mizoram. So what I found is that those who can suffice or those who can uh, like take away the pain of the consumers, uh, they are the most successful ones. Even uh, this Apple also, we can find, even in the local area also, we can find that. See, one example is that uh, one entrepreneur, uh, they were like uh, this, the, what we call as the seller of TVs, durable goods, TV, fridge, uh, and other durable goods. There were many before him. But what he came up with was that people doesn't have much uh, of this, uh, uh, let's say, money with them. So they need to have uh, 10,000 rupees, 20,000 rupees, 30,000 rupees with them. What he did was that he just connected that credit system. He started the higher purchase system. He gave them in a uh, credit without interest, but he still got up uh, like anything, uh, like uh, he became the number one seller of uh, durable goods within around uh, three years only. So the people having were having the pain of financing, uh, financing uh, like what they needed, the durable goods. So he financed it for them and uh, he still rose up. That like, if we can find a way to uh, ease the pain of the consumers, then we can uh, grow exponentially. Uh, you, we can have uh, many examples also. So uh, women are very good in finding the pains. That's what I'm trying to go inside. And, but we have to be careful because uh, I'm from the finance department, like uh, my PhD is on uh, investment. So, you know, this Chiapuam case, uh, the Ponzi scheme, the biggest Ponzi scheme that we have in Mizoram, more than 90% of the investors were women. So by word of mouth, like uh, women, uh, uh, they get the information. So they need to filter. They need to filter the market information by research, not uh, through the words of their friends and all. So what I found was that some of the women uh, interacted with them uh, and I found some who feel, some of them who feel, they didn't do much uh, research, market research. So we need to focus much more on market research, which uh, have a, a very high credibility. Uh, I, I'm going to uh, like, uh, like uh, I think I'm going like too technical on that. So these are the two things. We need to do more research and we need to find out the pain of the consumers.
back to you, uh, Inez Zoe. Raging now, this. Mammy, want to follow up on that? Some, ma'am, uh, Professor Zoe, you want to follow up on what uh, our chief case has spoken? Uh, <laughs> my activity is very shaky. I think I better not, I mean, take time here anymore. Okay, please take care of everything. Thank you. Okay, uh, there's one question that has uh, come. Uh, it, uh, Ruatlu, if you can answer this. I think you can also see the questions there. Uh, it says, can Vakiria share some of the challenges they have faced and how they have overcome in developing their economy in a small state like Mizoram, where industries are almost unheard of, except for small scale industries? Okay. Um, uh, some of the challenges, uh, there are a lot of challenges just uh, being like a woman in the, like, like I said before, it was like the company was started in 2005. So uh, back then it was like, everything was run by men. So everything they have to do, every question, every judgment they have to face because of women running their own business. Apart from that, uh, this Vakira started uh, with, um, I, I don't want to say like, z uh, like zero money, but like they, they like my parents, my aunties, they literally have nothing. So they went to bank after bank. Like last last week, uh, we were trying that we were arranging my mom's, uh, my mother's bank accounts. Like she had opened almost 10, 10 accounts to different banks. Uh, I, I asked her why she did that because back in the day, no, uh, no one in the, in the, how do I say? no banks doesn't want them to give them loans because they have no financial background nothing so no one believed in them and she had she had like i had to open several bank accounts so that at least like if i open 10 banks account then at least one might give me a, a business loan so they had to go and back every bank officer every bank employee to give them a loan because they they started this thing without having anything uh, so, uh, even here in our main office is based in Lelboya shopping complex in Zarkot. So when we wanted a store for ourselves, like I'm not like here to bash on the owner of the buildings and everything, but like when they heard it, like three women are running the store, they gave uh, they gave them like the store, like the, the places, which like no one would find if they unless if they search for it like hardly so they were situated the store was located on like the very most corner places of the market so everywhere they go there were many challenges and uh, one thing I wanted to mention is that running like when women wanted to run a business like even their family have to be supportive if uh, one if a mother is going supposed to go out and like provide for the family, the whole family has to be supportive and on board because like if a mom goes out every day uh, without like having her children to babysit, uh, ask them to babysit for another one, even that is uh, like a big hardship because when some of my family members and my aunties have a child also, we have to give like, a separate room which men doesn't have to like deal with all these problems because uh, all of the kids all of their child like three four months they have to sleep on the side of the store uh, so that their mom can take of, take care of the business so I just wanted to mention all of uh, some of these things because if we want if women wanted to be successful in this part of entrepreneurship well uh, they have we have to face like 50 percent of the things are like the male person or the men doesn't have to deal with so we have to deal with like 150 more percent of things so really we really have to be prepared for that thank you so much
Um, thank you, Rod Louis. Uh, many, many challenges you and your mother, your family has overcome to be what you are today. And uh, this has been possible only through the patience of those who are involved in establishing uh, a company. Now, there's one more question that has come. Uh, it's not listed there as such, but then uh, there's a question that says that, uh, this is with regard to uh, Vakiria. Uh, has Vakiria, have you tried patenting Vakiria? Yes, we are dealing with uh, patent vakiria, but as we've all as I've all mentioned, like the term vakiria is a very mm -hmm. try to paint it for ourselves. Mm -hmm. Paint it uh, as far as uh, industrial and entrepreneurship matters, but as a whole vakiria, I'm not sure that if we are uh, mm -hmm. whether we'll be able to patent it, but as like let's uh we are trying our best to uh to how do i how do i put it we are trying our best to put the vakiria as like when it comes to uh apparels and garment manufacturing so we are trying to patent patent like the vakiria in that sector thank you very much yeah maybe a little bit difficult in trying to get a vakiria patented because it's a traditional uh, attire, uh, but maybe uh, your logos or your emblems or some uh, of that sort. Uh, so um, as far as my understanding goes that you are, you have uh, started uh, with the process of patenting or in, under GI or? Uh, we are doing our research and we are contacting our like people who are dealing with the stuff. So we are in the process. All right, all right. Uh, we hope you get it patented, patented and uh, we hope that you are also successful uh, in getting to uh, whether it is patented or whether it is under the geographical indication tag or it comes under the industrial design, all right. Um, uh, there are uh, many questions. Uh, that may be asked, I don't know if the, yes, Professor Zoe, you want to say something? Uh, just before that, before Professor Zoe comes forward, uh, Anvisha, can you throw more light on that uh, uh, Kasi, that Meghalaya woman, that turmeric thing, because uh, uh, as I've been told uh, through this WhatsApp messages, that uh, it is one of the best selling products in Amazon. So can you throw more light on that? <clears throat> Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, thank you, Dr. Janet. Uh, so, Lakadong Turmeric, it has not received a, a GI tag yet. They have filed for it, but it is under consideration by uh, the Department of um, Patents, uh, Officer of the Controller General of Patents uh, with the Government of India right now. However, uh, it is known uh, uh, for a fact that uh, if a typical turmeric, whether it is the Sangli turmeric uh, from Maharashtra, or the Kandhamal uh, turmeric from the state of Odisha, or the typical turmeric that we find as um, packaged spice uh, powdered turmeric in the market, uh, has about 2 to 3% of curcumin content, which is the pigment that gives turmeric its yellow, bright yellow hue, right? So if we have about 2 to 3 per hundred uh you know units of the turmeric taken uh of curcumin in every uh measurement of the turmeric then uh lakadong turmeric is tested uh to have a quality of about seven to nine percent of curcumin content which gives it a bright golden hue color like you saw in the image that i had shared as well which makes it the world's finest turmeric because if you go to uh, South American nations like uh, Brazil and Argentina, or you go to the Southeast Asian countries um, such as Malaysia or Vietnam, which are the major producers of turmeric apart from India and the other South Asian countries, then um, they do not have such a high uh, curcumin content, which makes it very, very uh, difficult uh, to find such quality elsewhere in the world. So that's how it becomes the world's finest turmeric. And that is also probably why it sells so much on the e-commerce platforms like Amazon and Flipkart, like you mentioned, because of this uh, high quality 
right? And this naturally then leads to better applications in the cosmetic industry, in the pharmaceutical and nutraceutical industry, in very recently um, cure uh, as a preventive measure for the COVID-19 pandemic because of its high immunity and uh, high oleoresin content and so on. So yeah, that's what makes it special. And uh, interestingly, the quality comes from a unique traditional farming technique that is specifically adopted in the West Jaintia Hills district uh, of Meghalaya, right? The farmers, the women farmers there um, spend a lot of time in cultivating and the traditional farming methods that lead to such a high uh, production. So of course, there is a geographical element, a topographical element because of which naturally it is a better quality. But a big uh, factor that is attributed to uh, making it very good is the farming techniques of the Khasi women, like you just said. And that's what makes it so special. I hope that uh, answers your question. Thank you very much. Just one more question before we pass on to Professor Zori. Uh, so you are currently, uh, Anisha, you're currently working at Invest India, uh, Department of Promotion, uh, Government of India. So anything you can um, give back to the state of Mizoram. Our uh, MLA also is there. I think uh, he's very much interested in entrepreneurship, as he has said. So something uh, you so that much. you can give to Mizoram in, in any form. So um, very interestingly, uh, let me just then talk a little bit about the program uh, that I'm working on, which is the One District, One Product campaign. And uh, we are working towards covering one product or promoting one product from every district in the country. So naturally, all the 13 districts from Mizoram also are uh, pretty much in the uh, project, right? Uh, so in the current uh, analysis of the 106 products that are being promoted as a pilot before we expand to all the 750 plus districts. I believe uh, the product that has been chosen in the pilot state uh, is uh, chili, the Mizo chili, which has a GI tag uh, from the Siaha district specifically. And uh, we are in the process of collecting raw data. So uh, thank you so much, sir, uh, for taking interest uh, in the initiative. It would be very great if uh, your honorable office could provide us some uh, inputs on, you know, where is it that uh, the people, the farmers of the Mizzouchili require support. And uh, perhaps we can patch through on first as a pilot promoting that product, following which I believe the Mizopuan and uh, the ginger that you mentioned are also um, being considered from the uh, Lungle district and so on. So yeah, that is the kind of work we are doing right now and uh, happy to support in any way if the government has ideas. That's very nice to hear. So before we end, I think Professor Zoe would like to sum up our webinar uh, this afternoon. Uh, over to you, Professor Zoe. Uh, thank you for giving me this opportunity. Many things. And it keeps actually giving, I mean, a warning that uh, your connectivity is very unstable. So I'm afraid that anyway, I say thank you to uh, our honorable chief guest. I mean, this Dr. Vandal Chana and uh, our speaker, uh, Professor Vandal Chana, because meeting keeps going on there in the Mizoram University in different places. I was also in the meeting. So, but from there, since there was no power supply, then I had to come back that only. So he's not there in spite of his, I mean, being away in on this um, screen, then I would like to say a big thank you once again. Anyway, Dr. Janet would be actually proposing a formal word of thanks, of course, so I also say a big thank you to uh, Aneshwa Pati. Actually, she is the daughter of the colleague in the Department of Public Administration. I know her since uh, childhood. So she's still become I mean, a child for us, I mean, a, a baby for us, but she is now becoming such a I mean, grown up and mature, I mean, uh, beautiful lady. So I really, I mean, 
I mean, thank you, thankful to her also. And uh, actually this program has been um, uh, because of her, I mean, organized because of her also, in a way I should say. Then uh, I also once again, thank you to uh, this uh, Vakiria Private Limited. I know uh, in spite of, I mean, so many difficulties and especially to be on the screen because business people are too busy and then they really, do not want to be away from their I mean, business, even for one hour or so, and it is a great loss, but uh, still then they could spare their valuable time with us. Then I know them, as I said, and I feel very close to them also. So I actually uh, insist then they have been here with us and I say a special thank you to you also. And I also convey my, I mean, get well soon to Miss, especially Sang Zeli. Then uh, we will be actually meeting in uh, physically, I hope in the near future since COVID, I mean, situation, COVID-19 pandemic situation is improving day by day. Hopefully that by grace of God, things will be improved and physically we can meet and get more, I mean, uh, actually information from you and none more from you also. So the Women's Study Center is having health and culinary cup also that, I mean, they have actually, uh, we have enrolled many members, then they really would like to learn from you. But if we are to do, then we have to do in Mizo mostly if it is possible. So that's why offline program has been conducted also then uh, we have, I mean, Nilit uh, Study Center located in the Mizoram University and especially in the Women's Study Center to focus women. So, but because of this pandemic, then we don't do it. I mean, in physical mode, I mean, uh, offline mode, something like that. So let's hope that we will be able to activate soon after this gap, then, uh, we have been actually, uh, uh, what we call it, um, uh, set up even uh, organic soap society. It was set up, set up means formed, but we could not do much things uh, since this pandemic has come in 2020. So that would also be coming up soon again. Also have uh, a development club, uh, something like that. Then we have got a WhatsApp group also. So they were very active and then we, we could organize a one week training program and all like that. So if the government of I mean, Mizoram could also give funding, then we are ready to do. And then under the leadership and guidance and encouragement that we, uh, I mean, if uh, Dr. Van Nelsana or our honorable uh, chief guest can actually propose something and help us uh, to do something uh, in the name of the Women's Study Center, Mizoram University, we would be very ha I mean, happy. So even uh, Miss Party also can, I mean, give us an idea how to go about it and how to promote further the women entrepreneurs and all they are in the state of Mizoram through this Women's Study Center also, then we would be sharing again and again. And we also do a kind of a publication work, documentations and all. And this program also would be actually um, what we call it, uh, I mean, uh, uh, reported to the I mean, UGC women, women section there in Delhi, even in our university also. So this is how we have been doing. And then uh, since it is a university platform, we uh, sometimes do it, I mean, of course, in, in a Mizo also, but mostly we do it in this I mean, English language. And maybe in our next I mean, program, we may be able to do that, I mean, this similar program with uh, college students, even those who are not, I mean, in the colleges or in the university, but they uh, are the, I mean, uh, what homemakers and then looking after their children and the family and then from the comfort of their home. I mean, they have been doing wonderful things and baking and then pickle making and then uh, beverage and all like that, no? Then, 
juice making also we do and then paper bag making and all then this what we call it the uh, face mask uh, stitching and all and many other things we have been doing so they have done wonderfully and then they are doing their own business i mean home-based business and all like that and getting some few i mean bucks off i mean i mean to meet their ends and all like that so this is the achievement that the women's study center have been having i mean till now because of the encouragement and guidance and then uh positive i mean i mean what we call it i mean uh, blessings by the authority of the Mizoram University. With that, I say once again, thank you to each and every one of you and all the participants are also, I think might be having many other things to share. And then uh, through this, I mean, Women's Study Center, you can also suggest and share your expertise and experience and then even give us, I mean, a kind of uh, guidance. So with this few words, I say thank you once again. Over to you. The Dr. Janet. All right, uh, ma'am has said almost all the uh, gratitude things, but whole program must come to an end with a vote of thanks. So here I am proposing a vote of thanks. Uh, one of the best, I would say, uh, best webinar I've attended so far. We have very young, energetic panelists, our chief guest, very young, dynamic uh, chief guest that we have, uh, who is very keen on entrepreneurship and we'd like to thank uh, Dr. Valet Hanna. Uh, the assembly session is going on, but he's still spending time with us. Uh, thank you, sir, uh, for spending the time with us, sharing your thoughts and uh, 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 your ideas on entrepreneurship and also Mizoram. Uh, Professor Valet Tona, you're a very busy man. We thank you uh, on behalf of Women's Study Center and also the uh, Government Eyes of West College. Uh, we thank you for your uh, keynote address and panelists, of course, Anvisha Party, the Pandora box has been opened. So ma'am has said that you are now, the, uh, she also um, informed that you are the daughter of Professor Party, Srinivas Party, the senior most professor in the Department of Public Administration, Mizoram University. We thank you for sharing your thoughts and we hope you all the best. And I, we hope that you will have more connections with the state of Mizoram. Uh, Lalroa Tlui, representing Bakuria Private Limited. We thank you so much for uh, enlightening us today and uh, giving your thoughts on the challenges of uh, women entrepreneurship in Mizoram. And we do hope that there will be more and more platforms that, and we hope that we will uh, you know, share more thoughts on uh, women entrepreneurship or women uh, or entrepreneurship as a whole also. And we'd like on behalf of uh, uh, of Women's Study Center, Professor Zohoi, who uh, would like to thank all the participants because of the participants only this, this program has been successful. The principal government of Isaac West College uh, for always being uh, the beacon of Isaac West College for letting us have this platform. Uh, we thank all of you and uh, we hope you have a, a beautiful day, beautiful evening and a night. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, everyone. Goodbye, everyone. So much. Good to everyone. Thank you.